Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. It's another cold, wet and wintry day outside, so I'm in my workshop at home, got the fire going, the dog's been annoying me, but uh, I've got another project on the bench here, and this is a bit different. This one's a vintage desk lamp. Now this came from an old shed that was recently been cleaned out, and it was in the pile to go to the tip. It was all set to load the ute. I bought some stuff off them, uh, including some stuff out of this pile, and this lamp, it shouldn't have gone to the tip anyway. It should have gone into the e-waste stream. Uh, the last thing, it's actually illegal to put anything electrical into landfill in Australia now. But I could see a bit of value in this one. It didn't appear to be damaged. It's clearly um, been in the shed for a long time. It's filthy dirty. But there's no cosmetic damage that I can see. It's a nice sort of vintage gooseneck. I would suggest it's early 70s, maybe even late 60s. It is plastic. Um, but the one I had, I had one when I was at school in the late 70s, and it was a more modern plastic style, a squarer type of base. This one's a bit more streamlined that they used to have in the 50s and into the 60s. So I'd say it's late 60s. Uh, it's a fluorescent tube. The tube looks rather dark at the ends. I think I could see a black spot one in before. So there's a fair chance that the tube's no good, or at least it won't be very efficient. So what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to bring it back to life. Uh, a restoration project, um, possibly which won't be much more than a good cleanup, but we'll have a look over it and make sure it's safe. We might actually swap out the fluoro tube for a modern LED tube. And having a look underneath, the actual starter for the tube just plugs into the bottom. It looks like it's actually missing one of the rubber feet, so we might have to deal with that. But the good thing is that the plastic's not damaged. It should polish up quite well. Uh, we might plug it in at this stage and just see if it actually works. Okay, it's plugged in, and we'll see what happens. Um, it's a plastic casing, so it's okay to touch. Normally, I'd plug this in through my or through an RCD, but I haven't got one here at the moment. But that switch is operating. It's very stiff in the switch and we don't seem to have any activity. So it could be the tube, there could be a problem with the switch, it might be the starter, but it looks like we've got a bit more than a uh, just a clean up job, we've got a repair job as well. So we'll pull it down and we'll just make sure everything looks okay inside. I think the cord should be okay to use and we'll just take it through one step at a time and see if we can get the thing going and uh, give it a clean up as we go. We'll start by taking the top apart um, I'm going to clean all the parts up and it's much easier to dismantle it. As far as the economics of doing this job, as the thing is, even if it worked and it doesn't, you would struggle to get $5, maybe 10 if it worked quite well. But being so dirty and it just looks, it doesn't look the part, I think 10 would be top figure. But with a little bit of cleaning effort, because there's no damage, and if we put an LED light in it, being a nice 60s retro -y piece, I reckon presented well, we could get 50 for it. Now, it's probably, hopefully, only going to take us about an hour, so that's not a bad return for our time. The tube's very, very dirty. I'm not sure if it's okay. Maybe I should just round up another tube and see if that works now, and that will just prove that the ballast transformer in the base of it is actually okay. Okay, now I've removed the other rubber feet. They're just a push-in type, and they've gone quite hard. So, as you saw at the start, one was missing. So I've got a certain diameter hole, and I'll take these back to the shop and try and find something out of the e-waste that will do the job there. We do need to remove one, two, three, four screws. They're a flathead screw, um, which makes me think this light is probably a bit more 1960s than what it is 70s. So we'll take those four out. We won't undo the other ones at this stage. We'll just get the cover off and see what we can see first. Let's remove the screws. Now, before we go any further, I need to point out that it's always a good habit to get into to follow the cord, make sure you've unplugged it. It's so easy to be distracted while you're trying to run your mind through a diagnosis about what could be wrong with something and forget something simple like unplugging a plug. Next thing you know, you've got something live wires there. If you don't have it plugged through an RCD or an isolation transformer, you could be in big trouble. So just double check, don't think you're being silly, it needs to be a real habit. Now, obviously we've got it unplugged, you saw that? Proof, okay. 
And follow the chord too, because if you've got a workshop with a power board and lots of different chords coming off it, it's um, quite easy to unplug the wrong thing when you're distracted. So double check that. It's very, very good practice. Right, so I've got all the screws undone. It's still a bit firm here. The little bracket that holds the switch, I think, is still holding things in. So we'll undo that. That's not overly tight. That's good. Just a little collar threaded collar so now we should be able to just leave it the works out and we shall see if we can spot any obvious problems it looks pretty clean i've got an earth strap on there which is good the plastic's not cracked which is great so the thing's going to be worth fixing up it's an old style uh, ballast which is like a transformer so there's a chance that that could be the fault or the fault could be in the switch so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the switch because that was a bit stiff and no matter what else we find um, it needs fixing so that it operates smoothly so we'll undo this it's just a plastic threaded shank with a brass nut. Okay, I think that'll pull out. We should have enough length of wire. And it will allow us to see where the wires go a bit more easily. Oh, look at that. Did you see that? That's the neutral wire coming in from the mains cord. It was just sitting in that switch. I don't know if that's going to be the main problem, but it's certainly not good. Um, the active wire there is firm. It looks like the screw's loose on the neutral. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm going to pull the switch off and we will get a bit of contact cleaner in there and try and free the switch up. There's the active and the neutral wires. Uh, we'll make note of where these other wires come from and go to. I might take a quick photo. We'll pull the switch out and we'll just get that freeing a bit freeing up a bit better I think that'll be okay with a bit of um, spray in there and then we'll have a look at, at whether the switch is actually working we can just check that with our ohms meter so I've just sprayed the switch and it's come up pretty well it moves a lot better I used some deoxid the fader f51 which lubricates and protects plastic to plastic um, and it's also cleans out the connectors or the contacts and I think I got some into the unit so it seems to be clicking much more easily now so let's check the switch for continuity to make sure it's actually connecting so it's a double section switch so the top wires we can probably put that in there and I think you can see the meter hang on I'll prop it up a little bit and connect the other terminal there and we've got continuity there let's turn it off and that's off so that's good check that again so the top one's fine let's check the bottom one and we have nothing nothing at all okay there's an issue in the switch yeah, who would have thought? It feels pretty good now. Didn't before. So maybe it, it's got a broken contact or just a lot of gunk in the bottom. We can't really get into it very easily. It's riveted and I'm not about to drill the rivets out. Um, I'll possibly got one of these in a box in the shop. I'll have to have a look tomorrow. So let's... Okay, if that's the problem, that would not indicate that the ballast is okay. Let's do a bit of creative wiring and see if we can get the light to work. So we'll bring this back into view and I've got some got some leads here so we'll take the active through to the red wire that goes to the ballast and that's what the switch used to connect now I think that side was connecting but then of course it's not going to work unless the circuit's complete so the neutral 
goes into the wiring that leads to the starter. So that configuration there will imitate the switch being on. So let's spin around, have a look at the fluoro, and I'll click the power switch on, plug it in, power. Okay. Oh, look at that. I was about to say, okay, it's not working. That's interesting. Well, that means that our ballast is okay. The starter is okay. Well, we knew the starter was okay. The tube was a new one. So our only issues, well, actually we had two issues, didn't we? We had one loose terminal where a wire was possibly not connecting, but we also have a dodgy switch. All right, well, given that that all works, I'm going to not fiddle with all this because I was thinking I would need to um, probably bypass the ballast and put an LED tube in it. But given that it's working, I think we'll just have a look for another switch, put it back together, clean up the plastics a bit, and we should have a nice operational retro desk lamp for sale. Now, hopefully I can find a switch, but I'm sure I'll be able to order a replacement if I don't have one. I am going to go to the trouble of disconnecting, the, undoing these terminals and pulling the wires back down through the gooseneck because that will allow me to take the plastic housings off separately. I could also clean the gooseneck up and get a bit more of a shine on that. Um, but you can see how grubby that top section is and it'd be so much easier to clean up when it's dismantled. So I'll undo the wires and pull them back through there and then I'll take those plastic housings to the shop tomorrow uh, and while I'm well, hopefully finding a switch. I'll also give these a polish up and a clean up and then we can reassemble it next chance we get in the shed here at home. Oh, a slight change of plans. I've just noticed how they've secured the wiring in, in here and they've actually melted the plastic housing over the wire. I don't really feel like breaking that out and then having to remelt some plastic. So I'm going to take the wires from the other end. Um, there's four, and they're all white, so brilliant colour coding, hey. However, I can just mark on the end of each one where they go. The ones, there's one each end that go into the starter bracket here, and they've just got spring-loaded clips. Um, like a lot of these wires that just push in and, and automatically hold, there's usually, I don't know if you can see this, there's just a little hole there beside where the wire goes in. If you push a tiny screwdriver in there, it releases a spring steel section and the wire will just fall out. So we'll label all those. This clip will just bend open. We'll be able to pull the wires back up through the gooseneck from that way. It will mean that the wires will still be attached here, but I'll be able to clean it up much easier then. So I'll do this. I'll label all the wires and then we can take all the bits to the shop. So I'm at the shop today, I found another switch, it's a double stacker switch like the other one. The only problem is that one end has terminals, the other end has crimp on fittings that the wires have just been snipped off. But that's fine, I'll be able to solder wires onto that. I don't actually have set screws, it would have been easier. But anyway, at least the switch will work and it tests out fine, so that's good. I've also spent a little bit of time polishing. As you can see, I've just used a silvo. It's an old silver polish I got probably out of someone's shed. It's a bit gluggy, but it still works all right. So I've just been polishing up some of this plastic. It's come up pretty good, actually. There's some deep gouges in the base here that I can't really get out. Well, I'm not going to go to the trouble. And the actual transfer that says Lockwood isn't in as good a condition as I'd hoped. However, the thing's going to look pretty neat when it's all assembled. So the chrome gooseneck polished up well. I didn't actually pull the wires out um, just for the the remote chance that it would have been really difficult to poke them all through because they're a fairly tight fit probably not a remote chance probably a very good chance that it would have been difficult to poke them through so i've left the wires in that's fine they're all coded so i'll be able to put them back where they go so that's come up pretty good i'll be able to reassemble this tonight and we should have a nice little operational desk lamp back in hq tonight and just assembling this you can see how shiny the plastic came up it's um the silvo polish does a pretty good job on hard plastic so we're just assembling things here. I did uh, another check on that switch I found. And I think that has a bit of a dodgy connection on one side. It was being a bit intermittent on the meter. So I grabbed the original one because it'd be much easier if this works. Uh, just with the terminals, I won't have to do any soldering. And I pumped a heap of the uh, deoxit spray. 
in. That's the, whoops, that's the Fader F5 one. And uh, I worked this switch back and forward for a, a good couple of minutes. And it's actually got in there and the terminals are now connecting quite consistently. So I think we may have even fixed that. So I'm going to reassemble it with the original switch. At least it's easy to uh, just do the terminals up. As I said, I don't have to solder. So I'm just going to assemble this light now. The cord, the mains cord, I did clean up as well. I just put that in a in some hot soapy water and gave it a good scrub with uh, fine steel wool. It actually cleaned the PVC covering up pretty good because it was very, very grotty. It looked like this light had been used in a workshop. Uh, and you're perfectly fine to clean, clean these things up in water as long as you make sure they're completely dry. I tend not to submerge the plug in case moisture does get into the plug. But the wire doesn't matter being wet. Um, give it a good clean up. Leave it out in the sun to dry properly. Um, perhaps don't assemble it the same day and you won't have any troubles with moisture there. And it's going to look a lot better. Original cord, but it does look much better than how we found it. So really it's just a matter of hooking the wiring back up here. We'll make sure the earth straps are connected. We'll hook these wires back up we're just out of shot here sorry and uh yeah we should be able to give it a test very shortly okay i just double checked this switch and it's being intermittent again and i don't want to assemble this light and have the switch play up so given that the switch is no good anyway i'm going to try drilling these rivets out and just seeing if we can do anything with it the other one is as i mentioned proving unreliable as well I did a quick search on eBay and haven't been able to find um, anything similar that I can buy easily. Uh, perhaps there's a supplier that does supply vintage switches. I'm not sure. If you know, let me know in the comments. But I'm just going to run a fine drill bit in on top of these rivets. And we'll take that bottom one off. The part of this switch that wasn't working, I think, is the bottom section. So we'll see what we can discover. So I've got a fairly small drill bit. I'm just going to drill the very top off the rivet. Clearly, if we can fix it, we are going to need to replace the rivets with something. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, we've taken the top off them. I'm not sure how this switch is going to come apart. Possibly just falling apart. Okay, we'll get the vice out of the road. So it's actually pushed the top section through. I really just want to remove the bottom section if I can. Here we go. And I hope we don't have little parts go everywhere. I can see a spring in there. So we've got nothing to lose, as I said. We either throw apart, throw away a complete broken switch, or we throw away lots of little bits. Ah, okay. It looked like that bit was in the wrong place. I'll just put it down and we'll have a better look. Okay, just looking at this switch mechanism, it seems like, well, there's just a plate on that side, and there's a plate at the bottom on that side. And these little connector blocks just sit on top of the plate. They're not actually attached to anything. They just sit in there. And the one that was supposed to sit on this side is actually adhered to the plastic on the switch or the body of the switch. It looks like it's melted in a little bit. So it may have been pretty warm at one stage. And you can see that where it did arc, it was making connection was just on the edge. But because it's melted into the plastic housing of this part of the switch, it's pulled it too far away from the plate that it's supposed to push onto. And you can see there's a bit of an arc right on the edge of that plate there too. So I think this might be fixable. I'll take that connector terminal out of the plastic as best I can. I might fill a little hole. Uh, if it has made much of a hole, it's quite stuck. I'll have to lever it off. We'll try and do this on camera. I'm actually looking through the camera, so it's a bit fiddly. Certainly stuck in there. Okay, so it's melted a bit of a hole into the plastic. I'm going to try and fill that. And then that will mean that the block will be sandwiched properly and it should connect. 
Okay, I've ended up pulling this whole switch apart because the top section works the same as the bottom section. And the other switch that I've got that's also dodgy, I'm going to pull that apart too. Uh, because I think I can get the block out of the other one that will save me trying to fix where that little terminal is melted in. If that stays focused, you can see where it's melted. So I'll try and make one switch out of the two. Getting them all back together is going to be the, well, fiddly bit, but a bit of patience and a steady hand. Uh, finding a rivet to go through to secure it all will probably be my biggest challenge. Okay, now that we're experienced at switch demolition, let's get into this one. Oh, that's interesting. This one didn't have the same issue. These black, uh, these plastic block assemblies are fine but this one had one of these center spring push mechanisms that's actually broken the rest of it see here's what that's supposed to look like and that one's actually in two halves so that's good we can uh, reassemble one using we have enough parts to reassemble a good one uh, and this one of course had those crimp terminals which we didn't want but I can use the ones out of the other switch. So, all right, let's hope we can assemble it. I need to try and find some rivets. So here, this is the rivets I took out of the switch, and they're an aluminium rivet, and because obviously I've drilled off one end, they're going to be too short now. So I couldn't find any other rivets even close in my stack, but I found a bit of copper wire, and I was thinking copper being nice and soft, this is very heavy gauge copper wire. It's uh, about a bit over two mil diameter um, and I was thinking copper is very soft I should be able to to um, peen the end over and make a rivet out of it but every time I tried um, it just bent the shank and I look it would probably work okay if you've got a way of of peening it over and then we could probably send a punch to the bottom half but it seemed a bit much work so I rummaged through my my um, stack of nuts and bolts and I found some little brass ones that are exactly the right diameter and the good thing is that they're a countersunk end which means that it will be nice low profile for the top of the switch and I'll just bring the switch top here it needs to be fairly low profile otherwise the switch won't sit up high enough against the top housing and we need to be able to get that top threaded collar onto it so the countersunk ones will sit in that hole nicely so now it's just a matter of fiddling around with all these little bits and see if I can get it assembled. At last we've got this switch back together. I'll tell you that was a fiddly and a test of my patience job. Uh, I finally got it back together and it works and tests well. I did have to pull it apart two or three times and start again. Turns out these, this is a spare one of these I had. It turns out these can go a couple of different ways and it was a matter of getting the top and the bottom one lined up the same way because uh, a couple of times I had one switch connecting fine but the other one wasn't. And a few times I put it together and this switch was very tight. But she's all good now, it feels good. And both the terminals test out okay. You can see the brass bolts I'll put through there. So I'm just going to trim these ones back with my Dremel now. And then we'll assemble the light and hopefully it all works well. So I've remounted the switch as you can see. I've made sure all the wires are in the right spot. All the terminals are tight. I do have to adjust the clamp on the mains cord there to take out that slack but the switch is in place it looks good i've got that bit of cardboard back in which insulates the um where the mains wires go in from this bracket so hopefully it works so i've just plugged it in i haven't turned it on yet um so we'll see if we have some light i'll reach across and grab the switch the switch is on Fluoro is not on yet. I didn't actually know if this was on or off. So we'll just carefully push this down and see if the fluoro sparks into action. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. 
The switch feels much more positive than it used to. Really nice positive click. I'm very happy with that. We have rebuilt the switch. I must say I would have gladly purchased one rather than spend, well look, the best part of an hour really rebuilding that switch. But, you know, I couldn't get one straight away. I wanted to get this job finished and it's kind of satisfying to save that switch anyway. Uh, we've got left with a whole heap of parts over here of what was left of the other one. Um, I don't think... Oh, I might keep some of the little springs and things. They might be handy for future switch repairs. Anyway, she's all together and going. So I'll just tidy up these wires. I'll put the... Um, I can screw the cover back on there and assemble it. I still are yet to find some replacement rubber feet. But we'll put the three existing ones in so at least we can have a look and we'll call it finished and when I find some new feet it's easy just to lever those out and push them in. It's all back together, job's finished and I even found some feet off a set top box. I didn't push them into the original holes, I actually just put them under the self tappers and that seems to work fine. It raises the bottom off the desk high enough to so that the starter doesn't touch. So there we go, one finished, restored 1960s desk lamp with a nice operation, operational or rebuilt switch, nice and glossy, chrome sparkling, very happy with that. I reckon that's, that's a $50 piece now. We did spend a lot more time on it than what I'd planned, but sometimes restorations do that. But I've still got enormous satisfaction. It's actually kind of like two jobs because I did restore the switch. So there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next video. Bye.